All right. Good morning. Don't forget, folks, you got a great sale going on at redrecover.com. 30% off right now. These wraps are incredibly affordable. So shoulder, knees, whatever. You're you're a weekend warrior out there or just a workout warrior. It's great to optimize your workouts or to recover from surgeries or old injuries. Go to redrecover.com. Red light therapy will change your life. All right, my man, how you doing? How you feeling? Because uh, the Dolphin Nation around the world is feeling like shit after the last yeah. two weeks. Wow. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm in Dallas for the winter league meetings. Kind of a, you know, I would say a little bit of a slower meeting, um, you know, more kind of a perfunctory, nothing crazy here, but uh, interesting, some league uh, items on the agenda, the NFL's accelerator program happening here as well, where we get to get, uh, where a bunch of really good minority and uh, women candidates get to meet some of the owners um, happens here in, in Texas as well. So um, some things going on, I would say. Okay. All right. Uh, Dallas's decision to uh, go with T Y Hilton. Why? He can play. Uh, he can play now. He's ready. Uh, he is, as my friend Tom Pelissero said, ready, willing and able with the emphasis on willing you know, I think as you get to a point, um, you know, in the season where like there's four weeks left, you need people to play. And I think the thought of Odell Beckham Jr. was a really good one. It was fascinating. He was not ready to play. And I think, you know, signing someone for the playoffs at that position is risky because you don't know if they're going to come in and, the, you know, chemistry is going to be kind of messed up or they're just going to screw things up and get right in there. So, you know, I think Odell was a really good thought and interesting and definitely took up a lot of our headlines. But when it was unclear that he could actually play now, the conversation shifted uh, for the Cowboys and then for the Buffalo Bills as well. Well, it can't be about baggage, right? Because the Cowboys don't necessarily worry about baggage. They'll take more baggage on. And the good thing for T.Y. Hilton, zero baggage. That is a pro's pro. So, you know, I'm not going to say the same thing about Odell, but, well, but, uh, but even though like baggage or not, like it's just, are you ready to play or not? And right, I think, yeah. you know, Odell doing this, going on these trips, you know, having this big sort of free agency tour and then not being ready for like a month, you know, unfortunately was sort of on brand, but also I think frustrating for teams, honestly, just frustrating. So T.Y. is the opposite. I mean, he's ready. He had a good workout. He's a professional. He turned on a bunch of other opportunities and now lands in a really, really good situation for him. No doubt about it. Speaking of frustrating, but well, I just started it. What, what's your what's your thoughts on what's gone on with Miami the last two weeks? Yeah, not great. Um, you know, I would say two weeks ago was probably worse than last week. You know, I think last week was a really good defensive scheme for the Chargers a really good way to attack. And I know that they had a lot of good players not playing like, um, you know, and I, I would say, you know, having – doing what they did to Miami's um, offense was, you know, sort of alarming, but I think they can go to school and figure that out. Worse was two weeks ago when Tua was inaccurate. You know, I mean, I think last week not a lot of guys were open. I think two weeks ago he was inaccurate. Um you know, it's not the end of the world. This does happen, but, you know, definitely something to watch as we have another month of the season left here. Yeah, uh, I like to see how they respond. I think uh, Mike got a little too cocky. Uh, both he and, and Tua got a little lazy. They uh, kept selling for bombs, and there wasn't an adjustment to what was going on with what the Chargers were doing. And uh, I, I was a little disappointed with that with Mike because uh, I thought uh, – and then at the beginning of the game this past week, I don't know if you watched it, but he was forcing balls to Tyreek when he's covered by three guys. And it's like, come on, man. There's other people open. And and it was yeah, – there, like, there was this, definitely this force feeding yeah, of Tyreek. I'm not sure everybody was on the same page. I'm not sure all the routes, the proper routes were being run. Um, there were definitely some – some issues there. And, and yeah, I mean, yeah. when you're a quarterback and you're dropping back and you're not a hundred percent sure of what you're looking at until after the ball is snapped, that can lead to some bad decisions. Definitely out of sorts. Um, the kind of Dolphins team that we have not really seen this year. 
I'm uh, very interested to see what happens this week in Buffalo and how uh, and uh, and how they show up uh, this week against the Bills because I think it's going to be very important to come up with. I'm not telling you you got to win, but I, I'm telling you you got to perform well. You can't have another one of those performances. If you lose, you got to lose because all right, you played a hell of a game, but the Bills were just slightly better than you. I think Dolphin Nation can deal with that. Uh, another one of those inept performances. And um, yeah, the yeah. it's not gonna be a gonna be a good scene uh, around the world for the Dolphin Nation. All right, um, Mariota. That's kind of petty, right? I mean, it's you you weren't really performing at a high level, and Desmond Ritter's a draft pick. It makes sense to go and find out what the hell you got in the young man, and this guy leaves the building. That's it's kind of weak, man. I mean, you got your shot. You weren't good enough. Shouldn't you be there to support the young guy and help him? I would think, um, you know, it's tough for me to to paint this in any sort of positive light. I mean, now, to be fair, I don't know 100% of what's going on, but just judging from the the quotes and, and what it says, which is basically Mariota leaves and we're not sure when he's coming back and he's going to get his chronic knee thing checked out, which, you know, they'll put him on IR, so that's – that's okay. I mean, then obviously, you know, cut him at the end of the year. Um, I'm sure it's very hard. I'm sure getting replaced by a rookie is hard. I'm sure finally having the opportunity to start after all these years again and not taking advantage of it is hard. Um, not what you're looking for from a quarterback, not what you're looking for for a leader. And Mario has always been a little bit different, yeah. but I did not expect this. Now, on the other hand, Really, you know, to me, like this time of year, you sort of get interested in two things. You know, the really high stakes playoff games. Like I thought, um, you know, Dolphins Chargers was awesome, like a truly awesome game. Uh, fun, high stakes, truly awesome, except for Dolphins fans. Right. Um, <laughs> then I get excited for quarterbacks. Like, who are we going to see? Which new people are we going to see? And and being able to see Desmond Ritter has made the Falcons extremely interesting. Like, I have no idea what he's going to be, but I will be watching and fascinated by it. Yeah, and and guess what? It's the responsible thing to do by the Atlanta really, Falcons at really. this point. You know what I mean? It's it, it Marcus, you had your chance, dude. You had a a, a great opera. You know, Baker Mayfield has gotten a couple chances, and he's been, you know, dissed, and then – in a week, he goes over to the Rams and he puts together, you know, a pretty decent performance. And that's the way you got to do it. You got to fight through adversity. We all are going to face adversity in life. And I think that that, you know, that's a good example for Mariota is look what Baker Mayfield has been through. You know what I mean? And he's been more of a lightning rod than Mariota ever will be because oh, sure. he's, he's put himself out there for criticism where Mariota's never even done that, you know, overall. So it's, you know, I, I, I think, I think a guy like Mariota could, can actually learn something from Baker Mayfield's resiliency. Yeah, I would say that's right now with Baker. I mean, I think some of it is personality wise. He just believes that he is really good and believes that he should be starting. And, you know, is cocky, confident, like whatever you want to say, whatever has sort of propelled him through this. He has been through a lot and not all of it good. A lot of it has not been good, but it does feel like he has the same confidence that he always has had, which is not natural, but I think really does help him. In this case, I could not believe what he did last week. He is going to be the starter going forward for the Rams. Um, it's a great story. Another one where like, you know, what does he end up doing? I mean, does he win a bunch of games for the Rams at the end of the year? Like, does he set himself up to be a really good backup, a starter? Could somebody decide to make him the starter? Like, maybe. I, it depends on how he finishes, right? And and the beauty is yeah. he's hungry to prove to people that he belongs. And that's, you know, what, what a guy like Mariota should be displaying. By the way, you and I have been covering this league long enough. If you meet enough players, you know most of them have that kind of attitude. I don't care if they're the 50th guy on the roster. Usually, the football players that even are backups feel like they should be starting. 
And oh, whether yeah. it's realistic or unrealistic, that mentality is so important in what they do, in what you do, in what I do, in what any of us do in life. You got to have some kind of confidence, right? It's like, okay, so I'm going to leave regular radio, which is the thing that we grew up with, and I'm going to go on my own on a digital platform. Well, wait a minute. Is that going to work? You know how many people told me, really, you're going to do that? And now two years later, they're like, oh, wow, dude, it actually works. You know, you, you got to have some you got to have some belief in yourself. 100%. And no matter what the hell you're doing in life, dude. And if you don't have any belief in yourself, then it's really hard to have any kind of success if you don't have that foundation that you have to convince yourself that you can do it. Whether anybody believes it or not, you better believe it, right? I mean, that's the key, I think, every time. Yeah, and I mean, it's like when... You know, I always think about it in golf terms because you stand over a putt and you're like, yeah, I'm definitely going to make this, you know, and the really good ones just think they're going to make it all the time. And these are not natural acts. These are not natural behaviors. I mean, some of these guys are just it doesn't make sense. And you're like, why are you able to be so confident despite failing? Or if you're a corner, like, why are you confident you're going to stop this rep when you just got burned on the last rep? But the really good ones think like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's. The mentality is always fun to study and discuss. I would say that. You could be Sauce Gardner. Oh, you're playing in Cincinnati, dude. Get the hell out of here. You're going to play in the NFL? Yeah, I'm going to play in the NFL. Not only am I going to play in the NFL, I'm going to be one of the best corners in the NFL. You know, yeah. Cater Kohu for the Dolphins. Division two, bro, bro. He is like one of the better draft picks. And he's not even a draft pick. He's he's a street free agent from Division Two. Talk about having inner confidence in yourself. A kid that you know came from 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 Africa, and and found the 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 the, the, the by a lottery ended up in 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 um, in America, and then has had you know the belief in himself to go play a sport that is completely different from where he came from, and now he's in the NFL and starting. Yeah, that's confidence. Yeah, that's bro. Amazing. Truly amazing. That's wicked, wicked ass confidence. All right. Uh, a guy with wicked ass confidence is now, well, his life kind of changed with uh, the divorce. And now his contract's going to come to an end in Tampa. We all know Tampa doesn't really look like a championship caliber team. Maybe moving forward. Uh, San Francisco. Yeah, are they convinced with Trey Lance or not? Jimmy Garoppolo's kind of injured. I know the Purdy kid is on a roll, but does Tom Brady come back next year? And does he end up in San Francisco? Talk to us. Well, you know, I, I did some digging into Brady's situation this past week. And, um, you know, I kind of went into the season assuming he would retire. And I think most people close to him thought that that would be the case. He'd go move on with family and just kind of, you know, move on. He's got the Fox, you know, multi, multi, multi million dollar Fox deal. And then, you know, starting to play a little better. I mean, obviously last week wasn't good, but had that dramatic comeback the week before. It's obviously getting divorced now. Um, you know, maybe things have changed. I think if you look around the league, there's a lot of people that need quarterbacks. And, you know, I think what's going to be really interesting to me is if Tom Brady finished his year like this, which is not great. How much interest does he have? If you're San Francisco and you say, I have a 31-year-old Jimmy Garoppolo, I have a 24-year-old Trey Lance, I have a 22-year-old Brock Purdy, or I have a 46-year-old Tom Brady, are we sure that Brady is the best option? And I know he's Tom Brady, but he hasn't looked like Tom Brady this year at most times. What like what market is there actually? You know, it's gonna be a really have, fascinating. It doesn't have to be too special there. That's well, the beauty he's of that. Be he has, huh? He's got to be What's better. That? Yeah, no, no, I, I get you. I get you. But he, he doesn't really have to be that special there. And one, he's more durable than Garoppolo, more consistent than, than uh, Trey Lance, and way more experienced than Purdy. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. What if Brock Purdy has one hell of a finish for the next four games? and they make it to the playoffs, and he actually plays well in the playoffs, there's no reason to go anywhere because you've already made an investment in Trey. 
You, Brock is is paying dividends. You probably won't even bring back Garoppolo so you can save yourself money under the cap. So, let, you know, let's see how Brock Purdy finishes, if this story really is as Cinderella as it looks, or does the shoe fall off Cinderella? And then you say, okay, well, you know, he's a young guy that's going to make a bunch of mistakes. Well, this is a championship caliber type team. Do we come back with Trey Lance? Do we come back with an uneven Purdy? Do we come back with an often injured Garoppolo? Or do we put it in the hands of a proven champion? Right. You know? Yeah. And that's and it's going to be one of the more interesting decisions of the whole offseason. And uh, I mean, think about how many different teams have that kind of decision. Let's say, like, you know, what about the Raiders? Do they move on from Derek Carr? Do they get the draft picks? Do they make a run at Brady? What about the Titans? They have Ryan Tannehill. Do they make a run at Brady? It's on and I mean, the Bucks are going to try to bring him back. I know that. But you know, one of the more fascinating unanswered questions of this offseason. But by the way, uh, with the Tennessee Titans, so you think they could do something like that and not move on to Malik next year? Because if we'll you made the... I mean, the guy who drafted Malik Willis is no longer employed by the Titans. You know, when the GM leaves, it changes a lot. And, you know, we see... A lot of the trades we see are when you have a new regime or a new GM and you have old regimes draft picks or players they signed or whatever it is, old system. And those are usually the guys who move. I'm not saying it's going to happen to Malik Willis. I'm just saying it causes an unknown when you have someone like John Robinson losing his job and Malik Willis is still there. Was that a power struggle? I, Mike Vrabel says it was not. Um you know, obviously it is possible that, um, you know, the right. owner just kind of felt the direction of the team was going the wrong way and decided to make a move. We may not know. Um, they think they keep things pretty quiet in Tennessee, but um, I was surprised. That'd I was really pretty surprised. good, bro, for many years now. I, I you know, I, I get that whole first round thing that he had a little streak here where a couple first rounders didn't work out, but several other picks have worked out all over the place and moved. So it's just. It's kind of weird, man. Yeah. It's really weird. Wow. That one is – it looks to me like what Wanstead and Spielman went through, that it was a power struggle, you know? And that – that it just kind of reminds me of that whole thing. That they pushed Spielman out because Wani wanted, you know, complete power of personnel. And so, you know, that's that's kind of the way. And then he went on to, to Minnesota. By the way, what's going to happen with Rick Spielman? Uh, I mean, he was sort of in the mix for some of these opportunities last year. Um, I assume he'll be in the mix again, although, you know, in the NFL, once you sort of get out of it, it's tough to get back in. Um, you know, he had some opportunities at the end of last season. I would assume those would pick back up, but. He did a good job there. Dude. He just couldn't solve the quarterback. I get it. But damn, dude, they he did an overall pretty good job on both sides. Pretty good job. Ball. You know, they had good contracts. They were in good cap shape. They had some good depth, and, I mean, you look at what's happened. Like, you know, the new regime came over and made minimal changes and one of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah, like like we got Jeff Ireland and Rick Spielman in their early days here where they could make their mistakes, and then they went on to have better success in other places. And, you know, it's an example of, Sometimes we have to be patient with people. We have to yeah. give them opportunities to grow. All right, what are you doing this week on NFL Network, my brother? Well, here the rest of the day in Texas uh, covering these league meetings. Back at home uh, tomorrow uh, and then back on TV on Sunday. Another big slate of games, so we'll have some fun. Yeah, and prayers to our friends in Texas who uh, went through some uh, rough ones with some uh, some tornadoes yesterday. That was, uh, yeah. that was a rough Very one. Scary. All right, Ian. Appreciate you, my brother. We'll catch up next week, my friend. Thank you. Look forward to it, man. Take care. You got it. The great Ian Rappaport, baby, from the NFL Network and our Red Recover. Look around the NFL. Remember, go to redrecover.com. When we're talking about pain relief, injury, surgeries, and there's pain and discomfort along the way, we have wraps to help you out, whether it's your neck, your back, your shoulders, elbows knees ankles feet 
you name it, we've got a pad for it, folks. Go to redrecover.com, check out the video blogs, check out the blogs. And right now, we got one hell of a sale going on, 30% off redrecover.com take advantage 30 percent off so if you're dealing with some kind of shoulder pain me and my wife had our our shoulder issues and they're gone now man and because i'm a side sleeper i've been using the red recover wrap on my shoulder and it if it, it, it's gone it's gone the pain is gone the discomfort is gone the mobility is completely back it's not like i could still get the mobility going but it would be like oh you know that kind of stuff like damn dude and now there's like no pain and just feels great and uh, as a side sleeper man just it happens so i uh, now what i do is once a day i i put it on i was doing it twice a day when i had the pain and now that it's gone i'm just treating it once a day because obviously i'm still a side sleeper so there's going to be a little soreness with all of that red recover.com <laughs>